So if you are a contractor or a subcontractor working for the U.S. government, you're going to need to familiarize yourself with some of these terms like TAA, ITAR, EAR, DDTC, Series 600, Secure Supply Chain, DFARS, all the things you see here on the screen. And so today we're just going to go over briefly some of these definitions. So let's start with TAA. TAA really is, you know, done back in the 70s, often uh, within um, agencies, federal agencies, you'll hear TAA and maybe even ITAR used um, as cybersecurity efforts. Not really so much, although country of origin does have an impact. But the reality is uh, you can modify and scan and validate things from any country. Certainly, probably not the best approach to have items from un unwelcomed countries appear on a U.S. federal loading dock, um, just a perception alone. But basically, TAA is dealing with uh, export laws related to, you know, how many jobs are created, right, and the impact of the jobs in that economy. Um, it's dealing with um, multiple countries, country of origin, uh, for example, as well, the collection of the widgets that you're purchasing from those country and then how those widgets are put together in the U.S. to be used or in whatever country, um, but how those widgets are being used and what modifications were done to the widgets in, to enable them to be used. So TA has got a lot of variables that you have to consider. ITAR is really dealing with the DOD uh, U.S. military space, and it's a requirement. Uh, protection of documentation related to the solution is a big deal for many subcontractors and contractors. That basically means that you have to make sure that any data, even RFPs or data that has anything remotely associated uh, with an opportunity or with that federal agency, that it's protected properly. And uh, they have something in ITAR called flow down. And so basically, that means that if a contractor, a big contractor X, wins an opportunity, all the subcontractors A, B, and C all have to make sure that that data is encrypted, that those widgets are coming from the proper uh, country of origin, and that responsibility is typically in the terms and conditions that are pushed down to a... Um, to an agency, to a, excuse me, to a sub, to a sub, um, uh, geez, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry, uh, to a sub um, contractor within, within a contractor environment. Sorry about that. USMLL, USML and Series 600, basically this is a list of where the widgets are, right? Which widgets have been approved. You have to register as a, as a, supplier of widgets you have to register with dttc ddtc and they probably they excuse me and they have a form of governance over that so that those widgets when consumers buy them they know that they've they've been registered and the governance has been applied dfars is the acquisition regulation so this is the regulation that's using a lot of these terms that we've talked about oh ear over there on the right hand side now, EAR is um, essentially Department of Commerce. So EAR really deals with all things. They, they really focus on what's made in the USA, um, what was made by U.S. Uh, people, right? But they also have foreign products as well. So it's anything that passes through the U.S. Department of Commerce. Now, it's not really military specific like ITAR is, um, but... But it's there, right? And so you need to be familiar with it. And then, of course, non-compliance uh, to these regulations can be uh, 3x in damages. There are liable clauses in all of these regulations. And so you need to be careful if you're dealing with the federal government that you are compliant. And remember, compliance in some of these things is more of an art than a science. So uh, you have to read and understand and consult with folks that understand ITAR, TAA, and how to get you through through the process. Of course, the risk is apparent. Uh, risk with the widget itself, especially if the widget's uh, from a country um, that's uh, you know not friendly uh, with the United States, and that widget creates things. There's legal ramifications 
Um, compliance is absolutely critical. Uh, nobody really has the power to waive these things. These, you know, if you have somebody, let's just say from the Department of Defense, is well, we'll just waive that. There's no waiving here. You have to, you're either compliant or you're not compliant. So make sure you're compliant with the things we've talked about. And then some of those best practices. So uh, one of them is audits. So regular audits. Uh, Congress requires, for example, DOD to, to turn in audit reports. So it's important that you audit this system. The second thing is that you offer training, training about what export compliance is and that you have documented evidence that you have trained uh, folks. And then the last one really is if you're a contractor and you have subcontractors, make sure you put it in your terms and conditions about flow down and the responsibility the subcontractor has to protect data. For example, a lot of times it's the data flow, right? What the solution is, what it's doing, all of that are in the ITAR when it comes to technology. Got to make sure that stuff is encrypted. So you want to make sure that whoever's getting that document understands encryption and is following the rules associated with that, as well as their own internal communication. So that was a little more uh, lengthy than I had wanted it, but that's the basic view of secure supply chain, ITAR, TAA, DDTC, USML, 600 year, all of these things, DFARS, um, all of these things that impact uh, export and import and and all types of rules that are needed to do business uh, within the federal government.